So when an ice sheet melts, the water should go into the ocean. Now the sea level rise that causes is not uniform as you might initially expect. Now, quite a lot of that is due to sea level um, falling near the ice sheet because the land rises up through glacial rebound and also you lose the gravitational attraction of the ice. But additionally there's an effect of rotation and the axis of Earth's rotation changes due to changes in mass and this is what this demonstration will attempt to show. So what you'll need for this demonstration, some coins, some rubber bands, a football and a basin of water. So first of all, get your football, which I've bought from a pound shop, uh, which was perhaps an error, which we'll see later, uh, and uh, mark out some of the meridians of the football uh, with uh, your large rubber bands. Now you see that this is rotating nice and stably, and that's because actually this cheap football is actually weighted on one side. So I'm just uh, accentuating that by adding some coins to the bottom so that it rotates in a nice stable manner. Okay? So in addition to the uh, rubber bands marking out meridians, pop one on to mark out the equator. And then add to this some weights in the form of pennies. Now these uh, act as an analogy for the equatorial bulge of the Earth. So this is because the Earth is spinning, kind of flung out towards the equator, so it's a little bit fatter in the middle than at the poles. And uh, this enables you to rotate your ball with a nice stable rotation. Okay, so once you've done that, you can mark out the position of the, uh, the pole of rotation. So this is just with a, a white walker, whiteboard marker pen. Okay, so we've got a nice stable rotation there. Okay, so now we've got a nice normal rotating Earth. What we're going to do is perturb the situation by adding an ice sheet. Okay, and we'd simply do this by adding a couple of 2P pieces underneath one of the rubber bands and that's us adding mass to one place on the Earth like that. Now, because our ball is actually not the real Earth, and it's sitting in a basin of water, that causes it to tilt over to one side. So we have to balance that ice sheet with another ice sheet, symmetrically opposite on the other side. Okay, so now we've set up our experiment, and without the rotating, Ball, we can see that the, the, act, the, the, the ball is still in the same orientation. Okay, so we just dry the top off the ball because we're going to try to mark it as we spin it. Now. So when we spin the ball, you can see it now rotates around a different axis. You can try and mark the position of that with the pen as it's rotating. Okay, so it's quite tricky to do. Um, perhaps it would be easier with a more expensive football that isn't offset with that extra weight at the bottom. But you can see here we've now got a new axis of rotation. Okay, So just to kind of slowly rotate that, you can see now that the ball rotates around a different axis, and the reason for this is those extra weights that we've added to us ice sheet analogies are basically flung out uh, towards the equator. And you can see that the position of the new axis of rotation is directly away from the position that we've added the mass. So you can almost draw a line through uh, the mass, the old axis of rotation, to the new axis of rotation. So just to highlight that again, you can see that our, our new pole of rotation is directly away from our old pole of rotation from, the, um, from where the mass was placed. So why does this matter for sea level? Okay, so if you imagine the Earth here, and I've drawn a schematic ocean around that Earth. Now when you spin the Earth, it kind of bulges out at the equator, and the ocean also follows that bulge. And this is because of the centripetal acceleration caused by the Earth's rotation. Okay? Now if you change the axis of rotation, that centripetal acceleration also will change and the bulge will want to move with the axis of rotation. But the ocean can move much more quickly to respond to that 
than the solid earth, which responds much more slowly. So this causes there to be a sea level rise in two quarters of the earth and a sea level fall in the other two quarters. Okay? And this is the resulting sea level pattern we might see if we change the rotation axis of the earth, for instance, from melting an ice sheet in this case rather than adding. So if we melt an ice sheet over Antarctica, that will change the mass distribution around the earth, will change the rotation axis, and will cause uh, this spatial pattern of sea level change. Now this is just the sea level due to rotation. There will be other components of sea level change due to gravitational attraction of the ice sheet being removed and also because the, the solid earth will be deforming because of the change in mass load as well. Now an additional complication is that over time the solid earth will in fact deform and the bulge will, the solid earth will catch up with the bulge in the ocean so over time, this rotational pattern of sea level change will in fact go away. So it's important to remember that the spatial pattern of sea level change caused by mass distributions on the Earth is time dependent as well as being mass load dependent. Now a useful outcome of this behavior of the Earth where the rotation changes with mass distribution is that if we remove mass from a specific place on the Earth by perhaps melting an ice sheet, then that will cause the axis of rotation of the Earth to move towards the place that the mass has been removed from. Now this is actually quite characteristic, or diagnostic in fact, of recent melting in Greenland. Okay, so there's been a long-term trend over the last hundred years or so of the mo motion of the pole uh, away from its position currently at the North Pole, it's been gradually moving towards northeast Canada. Um, so this is um, some data to show that the blue arrows uh, on the, the map to the to the right. These are greatly exaggerated, uh, but this show the sense of direction. The long arrow showing the long-term trend, but importantly, since 2005, there was a sharp change in direction of where the pole was moving towards and it started moving directly towards Greenland in 2005. Now this is important because this suggests that there were, we were losing mass from Greenland um, and it, importantly it shows that there was a sudden change in the rate of melting in Greenland in 2005 and that melting rate has continued from 2005 until the present. So this is important because it shows the rate of melting over uh, Greenland has, has had a rapid increase since 2005. Now this finding is backed up by data from satellite measurements which measure the actual amount of mass over Greenland uh, and that's shown a rapid loss in mass shown by the red line on this, in this graph here. But the problem with the satellite data is it doesn't have a very long time period over which it was measured whereas the measurements of the position of the Earth's pole of rotation have a much longer baseline. So from this we can say that the, the melting over Greenland truly is an exceptional event that hasn't happened in the past, at least in the past since we were measuring the polar rotation of the Earth. So if you found this interesting or want to learn more about how the spatial pattern of sea level rise is uh, dependent on the, the changes in mass loading of ice sheets and what that tells us about the Earth, and also what it tells us about the, the past positions of ice sheets and their mass and their history, then rather than give you the actual papers, I thought it would be useful for you to actually do some searching for yourselves. So the four names up here, these are the, the big cheeses of glacial isostatic adjustment, which is the kind of the, the, the topic area for this kind of science. And there's some terms in here, rotation, sea level printing, true polar wonder, relative sea level, ocean siphoning, post-glacial rebound that you might put into Google Scholar and as starting points for your further reading and independent research.